Hello, I'm Dave Martin and welcome to lesson number two for Creo Parametric for Absolute Beginners. And this lecture covers the Creo Parametric interface. So I have the assembly open from lesson number one. And first off, the main part of the interface where you view your parts, assemblies, drawings, and other Creo Parametric models is called the graphics area. And inside the graphics area, we have the in graphics toolbar with a number of different commands. For example, if you accidentally position your mouse so that it's off of the screen, there is a refit icon that will drag everything back. Also, if you select something or you have some uh, garbage in the graphics area, there is a repaint icon, which is the keyboard shortcut of control R. And we have a drop down list where we can change how we're viewing our models. Maybe we want them to be shaded or no hidden line or wireframe. You can choose between the different choices. Personally, I prefer shading with edges. There's also a drop down list that allows you to change between your different saved views in the model. We have something called the view manager, which is covered in other lectures. And from this drop down list, we can control the display of what are called datum features. And datum features are just imaginary references that we use to create and control the solid features in our model. And we have an icon for turning the display of annotations on and off, and also the spin center as covered in lesson number one. Next part of the interface, let's take a look at the navigator. The navigator is this strip on the left hand side of the computer screen. And my navigator has three different functions. The first one is the model tree. And the model tree is the list of features in a part or components in an assembly in the order in which they are regenerated. And as we'll see in lesson number three, the model tree is a great selection tool as well. The next tab in the navigator is the folder browser. And the folder browser is how you can access different locations on your computer. For example, in lesson number one, I set the working directory. When I click on working directory, I can see the contents of that folder. And this is the embedded browser. This is also a web browser, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Next to common folders, you have your favorites. And so your favorites are different websites that you might like to go to. For example, maybe I go to McMaster Car a lot. Okay, so here we have the embedded browser, and right now it is covering up my graphics area. There's a little X that you can use to collapse it. If you want to bring it back, you can click the button. And again, this embedded browser is where you access your files on your computer and also different websites. If you don't want to see either the embedded browser or the navigator, you can collapse both to have more space for your graphics. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the toolbars. First off, we have the quick access toolbar in the upper left hand corner. And your quick access toolbar will look different than mine because I have customized mine with additional commands that I like to use fairly often. Over on the right side of the screen, we have your icons for minimizing and maximizing and closing the window and also some of our different help icons. Be aware that there is an icon that minimizes the ribbon and sometimes people accidentally click this without realizing it and then they don't know what happened to their ribbon. And be aware you can also use Control F1 to collapse and expand the ribbon as well. There is a command search. This is especially helpful for new users when you're not sure which tab a command is located on and also some other help resources that will be covered in lecture number four. In the lower right hand corner, we have the selection filter and by default, the selection filter is set to smart. When the selection filter is set to smart in an assembly, clicks with the left mouse button will select parts and when you're when you have a part open 
clicks with the left mouse button will allow you to select features in that part. And we'll go through selection in lesson number three. Next part of the interface, the ribbon. So the ribbon has multiple different tabs. For example, right now I'm on the model tab and this has commands that allow me to assemble new components or create new components inside of here. If I switch over to a part model, you'll notice that the commands in the model tab are different. These are primarily based around allowing me to create features in my part. And we also have an analysis tab that allows us to perform different measurements. There's an annotate tab for creating 3D annotations if you or your organization is using model-based definition. There is a render tab for creating photo rendered realistic images. Tools tab has a variety of commands, for example, allowing you to create family tables of different objects. The view command, excuse me, the view tab uh, gives you access to, to commands for controlling the visibility of different entities and also how you're viewing your model on the computer screen. Flexible modeling allows us to incorporate what's called direct modeling techniques into Creo Parametric. And the Applications tab allows us to switch to other different modules, such as PTC MathCAD for doing engineering calculations. All right, let's go back to the Model tab. Next part of the interface, Dashboards. And so let's say I decide I want to create an Extrude feature you're going to notice that we get an additional tab open that says extrude and it's got a bunch of different controls on here and these interfaces are commonly referred to as dashboards for a feature and these used to open up down at the bottom of the screen and so that's why they were compared to say the dashboard of a car you would drive but now they open up on the top of the screen i'm going to cancel out of this command and besides having different uh, dashboards, you also have dialog boxes that can open. So for example, here's a dialog box for creating a sketch, and it's got different collectors that I can use for selecting objects, and many of your dialog boxes will have additional tabs as well. Also in Creo Parametric, you're going to have what are called right mouse button menus. So if you select something with the left mouse button and then hold down the right mouse button, you can get a pop-up menu with some of the most convenient commands for the kind of object that you have selected. The last part of the interface that we'll talk about is the message area. And it's this little strip down at the bottom of the screen. And the message area is where Creo Parametric is having an ongoing conversation with you. And I highly recommend as a new user in Creo Parametric, you get in the habit of clicking something and looking in the message area, clicking something and looking in the message area. And definitely any time that you get stuck or it seems like you might have done something wrong, read the message area. And as you become more familiar with Creo Parametric, you will use this less and less, but it's especially helpful as a beginner. This concludes lesson number two. I hope you enjoyed this video.